Hey guys and welcome back to another one. Now today we are going to test out the next box N9 which is a budget, budget, budget Android TV box with all the pros and cons uh, associated to a box such as this. Now this is also the first time that I did test out the new entry level sock from Rockship, the 3229 and with that in mind let's go straight for the video. And here we are with the next box N9 that features the quad core CPU Rockship 3229, 1GB of RAM and 8GB of flash storage with Android KitKat 4.4. And regarding our usual and quick unboxing experience, once we open the package, we will find the next box N9 on the top, one power adapter, HDMI cable, infrared remote control, and the usual documentation. Now, when we touch it, there are no miracle guys. This is a cheap box and that's exactly what we get cheap plastic and the cheap look which there's nothing wrong if we know exactly what we are getting now at the front it has a dim blue light when the device is on on the right hand side one sd card slot and three usb 2.0 ports at the back one usb 2.0 port audio out av output hdmi ethernet port and a power input jack on the top the next box n9 logo and at the bottom four rubber feet and some vents now regarding the launcher we have seen it many times before and I also have mentioned that we can install any other launchers so let's not waste time here. But I would like to point out that during the time that I've been using this box there have been some issues like the one that we see on screen that forced me to reboot it not many times but a few. And also to point out that the internal storage is partitioned which may cause some limitations on the installation of AV apps. Now moving to our usual benchmarks on disk speed test we are getting 19 megabytes on reads and 11 on writes. On the network speed test using the Devolu Gigabit Powerline Adapter Kit with Wi-Fi AC we got on Wi-Fi 44 megabits on downloads and 20 on upload. On the Ethernet connection 93 megabits on downloads and 20 on upload. On Geekbench 3 350 on single core score and 1165 on multi core score. Anton 2 with roughly 21,000. 3D Mark score highest Storm Extreme with 2193 and finally Epic Citadel with 55 frames per second on average. Now nonetheless all these benchmarks are not giving us the real numbers especially those that uh, benchmark the graphics uh, just because the firmware is forcing the apps to run at 720 and then scale it up to whatever resolution we choose which at this moment is 1080 and this is something that it's not new here on the channel we have seen it a few times before but it's something to have in mind. And regarding the remote included, it's an infrared remote and you guys know my opinion, just get a wireless one. Now I'll try not to forget to post a link to my remote comparison video right over here. And moving to the gaming department, the overall experience was good. I did notice a big delay on loading heavy games because of the slow storage, but other than that, once we are playing, I had no issues at all. I tested Asphalt 8 Airborne and Responables and working just fine with a really nice experience. Not forgetting that they are running at 720 instead of the 1080 full resolution. And next I went to Kodi and I did find a Kodi version with a lot of add-ons and as usual what I do is to remove that version and did a clean installation of the latest version available and the results were not so good. 1080 was okay with the exception of Sintel and 4K was just a disaster on all the samples. So I did reset the machine to get the Kodi version uh, installed from factory and now I could play all the samples Big Bug Bunny, Tears of Steel and Sintel up to 4K with H.264 and H.265 codecs and in terms of 10-bit video playback with the original version of Kodi it's just impossible as you guys can see on screen and with the included version it plays but with no sounds and with a lot of frame drop. And finally using Airpin Pro which is a premium app and I was able to stream from my iPhone to the box with no issues and from the iMac the experience overall was okay with the exception that the box will not use 100% of the screen. Other than that the image and audio was smooth on my three test magazine style slideshow sliding panels and vintage print as always on my videos. 
So before we move on to the conclusion guys, this is a cheap box and has to be seen as one. I would suggest this box for someone that wants 1080 video playback and don't mind waiting for the apps to open. And of course, if you are on a very low budget and don't mind the cons, then probably this might be a choice to consider. So in conclusion guys, things that I did like the most were the low price point of this box, it comes rooted from factory, a okay performance for the price, nice for 1080 video playback and airplay was not bad at all. On the other hand, things that I did like the least, there are no online updates and this box has some firmware issues, it comes with the new Rockship 3229 chipset but still on Android 4.4, storage is partitioned, airplay was not using 100% of the screen and finally resolution forced at 720 by the firmware and that is it we have reached the end of another review this time the next box n9 android tv box hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so don't forget that usual thumbs up my name is roberto george and as always i'll see you on the next one